Uh, Ms. Anna Cecilia Escalera. She's from the Ministry of Environment and Water of the Pluri uh, National State of Bolivia, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC. And she's going to talk about the Resilience Toolbox, Web GIS based cost effectiveness analysis of DRR measures. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Cecilia Escalera and I work as an hydrologist for the Ministry of Environment and Water of Bolivia. The disasters related to natural hazards in Bolivia have increased over the past years due to a growing part of the population living in vulnerable zones. Yeah, this one? Okay, thank you. Living in vulnerable zones, well, the impact of these disasters is exacerbated by climate change in our country. 20% of the population lives exposed to at least three hazards uh, and these regions contribute in more than 20% to the gross domestic product in our country. As a result, Bolivia is among in the 32 countries with the greatest exposure to economical risk worldwide. In the past 10 years, Bolivia has seen a seven-fold increase in the public investment for infrastructure development. It is therefore critical for us to understand the natural hazards our infrastructure and communities are exposed to to evaluate the risk of damage, define potential risk mitigation measures, and determine if these plan and mitigation measures are profitable and effective or not. Historically, there has been in our country a complete lack, or at best, a very weak integration of disaster risk related factors and climate change adaptation factors in infrastructure planning and implementation. To face this issue, over the past years, the plurinational state of Bolivia has started developing a number of regulations to integrate these factors at three levels, political, strategical, and operational level. However, to be implemented in a fully operative way, we have identified a necessity to make this through the implementation of quantitative tools capable to, of enhancing the established reg regulations that our country are working on. In this context, we have developed one of these tools, the Mi Resiliencia Bolivia tool. And for its explanation, I will now leave you the stage to my teammate, Joannes Valen, part of the Geotest group, the group that help us to develop this tool. Many thanks, Anna, for these introductory words, and hello, everyone. My name is Johanna Zwalen, and I work for Geotest, a Swiss consulting company. I'm part of the team who has developed Mi Resiliencia and I'm very happy to be here today and to be able to present the Resilience Toolbox Mi Resiliencia. I would like to use the time to briefly explain you the reasons for Mi Resiliencia as well as to present how it works and who can use it. Okay, <laughs> so let's start with the reasons for the Resilience Toolbox. As we all know, the frequency of meteorological and geological disasters has increased in recent years worldwide. And appropriate measures are needed in order to prevent disasters and to mitigate impacts at so many places. Decision makers all over the world may be asking questions like should measures be taken? How should measures be prioritized? Are the planned measures adequate? Risk analysis and cost benefit analysis as performed by Mi Resiliencia support answering exactly these questions. And I will now explain you why. First of all, risk-based planning of measures is of greatest importance when allocating resources where they are most needed. While hazard analysis concentrates on the natural process, risk analysis also considers the assets at risk, their exposure and vulnerability. Hazard analysis 
is of is very important for the for land use planning and may help to avoid um, risks or uh, assets at risks. Risk analysis, on the other hand, informs about the probability of hazardous events and its consequences. Furthermore, cost-benefit analysis of mitigation measures supports current and systematic decision-making. But what does cost-benefit analysis um, dealing with DRR exactly mean? Well, it's simple. The difference between the risk without the measure and the risk with measure yields in the risk reduction, which is the, the benefit of the measures. If we divide the benefit the annual, the annual benefit, in our case here, almost 400,000 US dollar per year by the cost of the measure, we obtain the benefit cost ratio, which is above one for economically viable measures. Benefit cost ratio determine economic efficiency and cost effectiveness of the measures and can therefore be a criteria or one of the criteria to indicate whether a measure should be implemented, should be realized or not. <laughs> After shorting, shortly having presented you the reasons for Mi Resiliencia, I would now like to present you the approach and to present you how it works. Mi Resiliencia enables the assessment of risks um, for disasters caused by various hazards including inundations, landslides, debris flows, and drafts. It evaluates risks and cost effectiveness of measures in a quantitative, systematic, and standardized manner. It is a national calculation tool, and this means that it can be applied to planned measures all over the country. It considers structural as well as non-structural measures and can calculate risks for direct and indirect impacts of disasters, including risks of damages to infrastructure, loss of life or economic losses. Methodologically, it is based on the Swiss method, economy, and which is used in Switzerland since 2008 to evaluate the economic efficiency of mitigation measures. Mi Resiliencia includes a web GIS, a web-based geographic information system, as well as two methodological guidelines. A first one on risk, on, on, sorry, on hazard analysis, including um, methods on modeling and then a second guideline on risk analysis and cost benefit analysis let's now have a short look on the approach for the calculations and for the web gis the web gis integrates how can i go back Sorry, I need to go back. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's go back to the approach for the web GIS. It integrates information on the hazardous event, its intensity and frequency, as well as information on the assets at risk, their vulnerability and resilience for both the hazard and the resilience, the information for, for before the measure as well as with the measure has to be included. This information has to be assessed quantitatively beforehand and has to be uploaded or digitalized directly in the web GIS by the user. Based on the 
damage estimated for each scenario, the overall risk for direct and indirect impacts for the situation with and without measure is calculated. The difference between the, the, the risk before the measure and the risk with the measure yields in the risk reduction, which means the benefit of the mitigation measure. Dividing the benefit, the annual benefit, by the annual cost of the measure, be it structural or non-structural, we, ob we obtain the benefit cost ratio. Mi Resiliencia is developed for professionals and authorities in charge of planning and financing mitigation measures. No knowledge of geographic information is needed in order to use Mi Resiliencia and no specific software requirements either. A user-friendly interface makes it easy to use the web GIS and the methodolog methodological guidelines explain the methods applied. And very important um, to mention that the, the methodological guidelines explain how to, um, to gather the information which is needed for the web GIS calculations. With these words, I would now like to hand over to Ali Neumann from the Swiss Agency for Cooperation and Development, who will do the final presentation work. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, I'm, I'm Ali from uh, Switzerland, and we help Bolivia uh, in developing this tool. It's a, a tool that is easy to use. I mean, I think you got it. If you have a house that costs a million and uh, every 10 years there's a flood, then on average you lose 100,000 per year, right? A and then you will not want a, a protection measure that costs more than 100,000 per year. And then we have the human life losses, so we integrate this also. So um, this, this tool is important that it is easy to use, but of course, it has to be for the country. There are parameters in there that need to be calibrated first for the country. So that's one thing behind that. But then the tool needs to be embedded in a broader process of institutionalizing cost-benefit analysis for a country. For that, of course, you need political commitment. We have this in this case with the Ministry of Environment and Water and the Planning Ministry in the case of Bolivia. But you know, also need capacities. Uh, capacities, you saw hazard maps, intensity maps, you need people who, have to dev who can develop that and of course you need to be able to plan to design mitigation measures. So if you are interested in developing, institutionalizing a process of this kind for your country, there is still more on that in the learning lab at 1 p.m. in the other building and otherwise we are here and hope You'll get along with some ideas. Sometimes this is not only for this economic stuff, it can also help to sensitize, awareness raising. People start to understand the risk, how it is calculated, how mitigation works. We still have one minute for questions, if there is something. I was just wondering if the platform is open or open source, can anyone use it? How, is that, how are you working with that? Yeah, the uh, equations be behind this, you can uh, access for, uh, this is based on Switzerland's experience, and uh, you can find all the equations behind that on the website economy.admin.ch. I mean, that is cost-benefit analysis and, and all is published there. Uh, the, the WebGIS interface is not uh, public open source in that sense.